Hey everyone, this is May Park. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to create a couple of cards using a stenciled background and raised die cut imaging. My inspiration came from these cards that I created last month. I just love the unusual shape of my front panel of my cards, so I decided to use this idea again in today's video. Besides the shape of my front panel, I didn't plan out my entire card design in advance. So you will see me going with the flow and making a few changes along the way. As usual, I'll share the behind the scenes video at the end to show you my messy desk after my project is done. This video is part of Alternate July 2018 release block hub celebrating a release of new stencils. Make sure to visit my blog for more details and don't forget to enter a giveaway for a chance to win a $30 gift certificate to the Altony online store. When it comes to using stencils, I love creating a stenciled background using white embossing paste for creating some texture and dimension on my background. Applying texture paste over the stencil is so much fun and anyone can make a gorgeous background. Today, I decided to step outside of my comfort zone and try a different but very easy technique. I'm going to use the filling dirty stencil for today's project, but you could use any stencil that has a regular pattern on it. I'm going to begin by cutting my panel to 4 and a quarter inch by 5 and a half inches using Timur's tonic paper trimmer out of Nina Solo White 100 pound cardstock. You can use 80 pound cardstock if you want to but the heavy weight cardstock will work better for today's project since I do lots of inking on the paper. I'm going to secure my stencil over the panel of white cardstock using washi tape so the stencil won't move while inking. Then I'm going to apply alternate pink pearl ink using a blending tool. I'm moving my ink blending tool in a circular motion for smooth blending. I'm also applying the ink heavily toward the center of my panel to create a gradient loop. Once my first color is done, I'm going to lift up the stencil and clean the ink with a baby wipe. Then I'm going to create another background with a different ink color which is citrus burst. I wanted to add another color to fill in the gaps between each polka dot, so I'm shifting the stencil a bit to the left and inking again using bamboo ink to create a two-tone polka dot background. By the way, I prefer to use an old blending foam rather than using a brand new foam so I get a better result with ink blending. If you don't have a blending tool, you could use a makeup sponge as well. Next, I'm going to remove the stencil to reveal my stenciled background. I really love how my two-tone background turned out. So I decided to apply the additional color on my pink pearl background panel as well. I'm so in love with this feeling that is stencil. This gorgeous new stencil makes creating colorful backgrounds so effortless. The result is amazing and it's so easy to create. Now I'm going to work on creating a focal point of my card. I'm placing my Nina Solo White 100 pound cardstock inside the original Misty stamping tool and I'm using magnets to hold the paper in place. Then I'm pulling out the large floral silhouette image from Altonew Frosted Guard stamp set. But you could use any solid floral image you may already have. I'm going to ink up the stamp with evening gray ink and close the misty door to stamp the image onto my paper. And I stamped one more time with the same ink to get a solid and intense impression. To add more intense color along the edge of my image, I'm going to ink up the stamp with mocha rock ink. To blend in the color, I'm using my sponge dabber so I get a smooth color transition. But you can skip this process if you want to. Multi-step stamping with a few different shades of ink help you create a dimension on your solid image. Once my stamping is done, 
I'm going to pull out the coordinating die from the frosted garden die set. I'm placing the die of the stamped image and secure it on the paper using washi tape so it don't move while die cutting. After placing my paper within cutting place, I'll be running them through my Spellbinders Platinum die cut machine. I'm matching my die cut flower over the stenciled backgrounds. But I don't think this gray flower doesn't look good with any of these backgrounds. So I'm going to create another flower. This time I'm stamping the image with espresso and mocha inks. Inspired by my cards that I created last month, I decided to create a unique card front by die cutting my background panels using the pocket banner die and the party banner die. I really love these banner dies because it has some stitched lines along the edge which add subtle interest to my banners. I wasn't sure if the colors I chose for stamping my flowers look great on my polka dot backgrounds. To be safe, I created additional flower die cuts in different ink colors, maple yellow and heartbeat. This is the moment when I finally decided my card design and colors. So I'm going to start over by creating a couple of stenciled backgrounds. This time I'm using mocha and Moonrock inks, which are the main colors of my first flower die cuts. Again, I'm heavily applying the inks toward the center of my panel and fading out the colors toward the edge of my panel. But you can apply the inks evenly if you want to create an intense background color. Once my inking is done, I'm going to die cut my panels using the pocket banner die and the party banner die. I'm sorry, you have to watch the same process again. But I just wanted to show you my entire process as I sometimes go with the flow without much planning and I change my mind a few times along the way. That's why it usually takes me 2 or 3 hours to complete just one card. And I'm a slow card maker. Now it's time to assemble my cards. I'm going to mount two flower die cuts together using 3M foam tape. I'm matching the gray flower with the red one and brown flower with the yellow one. This is a good way to save your leftover die cuts and add interest to your die cut image. I'm going to pull out a piece of A2 size green leaf cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. I'm scoring my cardstock at quarter inch with a scoring board and bone folder. Then I'll be attaching my pocket banner panel on the colored cardstock to make a top folding card using a double-sided tape. If you are not sure which colored cardstock you should use, just choose any color from the color combo you used for your stamped images or choose any complementary color from the background colors you used. I'm going to trim off the excess paper with my paper trimmer. Next, I'm going to open my sentiment. Here is a plastic container full of my sentiment leftovers. I store all of them in one place for future projects, but that's also useful when I'm not sure which type of sentiment will go with my card design. I'm just pulling out some of the sentiment banners from the container and place them over my card front to decide types of font, size, and color of my sentiment. I think I like the white heat embossed sentiment with a clean and simple font on red cardstock. Then I'm going to adhere two layers of my die cut image on my stenciled background using tonic nouveau crystal glaze. If you want to add extra dimension, you could mount your die cut image using 3M foam tape. Here I have three shades of red colored cardstock. I'm matching each colored cardstock with my card to decide which shade of red color will go with my entire card design. I think I like the medium shade of red colored cardstock, which is lipstick red cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. I pulled out two sentiment stamps from the two different stamp sets. Then I'm going to ink up the stamps with alternate embossing ink and stamp them on the paper. 
While the ink is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle some alternate pure white embossing powder of the sentiments and tap the excess powder off my paper. Then I heat them my sentiments with heat tool until they are completely melted. Next, I'm going to trim my sentiments into a thin banner using a craft knife and ruler. I love both sentiments. You are always in my heart from the heart on heart stamp set looks good with the all-day stone background. And you are my inspiration from the half-tone circle stamp set looks good as well because it has more large font that makes the sentiment pop against the busy polka dot background. So I decided to go with you are my inspiration as my sentiment. So I'm going to mount the sentiment banners on the cut fronts using 3M foam tape to give some dimension. I'm using my t square ruler to place my sentiment banners in straight. To finish off my card, I'm going to add some dust on my stenciled background using tonic milfoil crystal drops red berry. I was going to add only several dots, but I couldn't stop adding the dots. But I think those red dots bring my card together against the polka dot backgrounds. What do you think? This is it for today. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And I'd love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss a new video from me. And don't forget to visit my blog to see more details of my cards and enter the giveaway. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time with another video. Bye bye!